The U.N. will press the United Arab Emirates about Princess Latifa, who says she is being held hostage in a secretly recorded video obtained by the BBC. The daughter of the billionaire ruler of Dubai claims she's been held hostage since she tried to flee the UAE nearly three years ago. In February 2018, Princess Latifa successfully escaped with the help of a friend, only to be captured eight days later. CBS News's senior foreign correspondent Elizabeth Palmer reports from London. Uh, it wasn't, um, For the past two years, this is the only way Princess Latifa al Maktoum has communicated with her friends. I'm, I'm a hostage and uh, this villa has been converted into a jail. In videos secretly recorded on her phone. I've been by myself, solitary confinement, um, no access to medical help. Um, no trial, no charge, um, nothing. Her father is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the fabulously rich ruler of Dubai, a business center and resort on the Persian Gulf. In the videos, Latifa alleges he's keeping her locked up. After a daring escape attempt in 2018 with her martial arts teacher, Tina Yauhiainen, who's since set up the Free Latifa lobby group. In 2019, with international pressure growing, the former Human Rights Commissioner Mary Robinson met with Latifa in Dubai at the home of another royal family member, Princess Haya. Robinson's verdict that Latifa was troubled but in the loving care of her family. Then the secret video stopped coming a few months ago and Robinson says she was tricked. I was misled initially by my good friend, Princess Haya, because she was misled. Haya began to explain that uh, Latifa had quite a serious bipolar problem. And they were saying to me, uh, very kind of, in a way that was very convincing, we don't want Latifa to go through any further trauma. Now the British government is facing calls to get involved. Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Well, uh, that's something, obviously, that uh, we are concerned about, but uh, the UN Commission on uh, Human Rights is, is looking at that. And I think what we'll do is uh, wait and see how they, uh, how they get on. We'll keep, uh, keep an eye on that. But Sheikh Al Maktoum is a frequent visitor to the UK with powerful connections. Britain's Foreign Secretary has made it clear he'd rather hand off any investigation to the United Nations. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, London. And, uh... My guest, Tina Yauhi-Yainen, is the trusted friend who helped Princess Latifa escape in 2018. She is the co-founder of the Free Latifa campaign. Welcome, Tina. Great to have you with us. First, can you tell us a little bit about your friendship with the princess and then walk us through what happened when the princess escaped in 2018? Uh, well, basically, I met Latif for the first time um, towards end of 2010. She contacted me first to um, ask for uh, capoeira lessons um, privately. So I started teaching her. And, and somehow we became very, very good friends. Um, we, we understood that we had very similar interests. And then towards end of um, 2013, we started skydiving together. So that brought us even closer, because obviously you have to trust your skydiving partner. And um, around 2016, 2017, um, she basically asked me to help her to escape. I mean, I was, I was fully aware that her life was very restricted. She was not allowed to study. She wasn't allowed to work. She had not left Dubai since year 2000. So I, I fully understand what her reasons were. And then we started plotting the, the escape that finally took place in 2018. And can you walk us through that escape and what happened, how the princess was captured and how you believe your whereabouts were discovered once you reached international waters? Um, basically, um, yes, we basically drove to, to Oman from UAE and um, then took a dinghy. There was a friend of, friend of mine who was helping um, to, towards the international waters. And then the captain of the boat and um, another crew member 
um, they met us halfway uh, with jet skis. And then we did um, the final maybe 12, 15 miles on jet skis in the middle of the ocean with huge waves. Um, so that itself was, was already uh, quite a crazy experience. Um, so eight days um, at sea and then um, one evening we were about 30 miles or 50 miles off the coast of India and uh, the captain was meant to be organizing a fuel um, for, for uh, like off, offshore fueling for the boat. And then suddenly we started hearing uh, gunshots from the upper deck and, uh, and the cabin started filling with smoke. And we had basically been, um, the boat has been, was, was raided by, by Indian and, and UAE military forces. And Latifa was dragged off the boat, uh, kicking and screaming. And that's the last time I, I saw her. And do you have any sense who gave up your whereabouts, how your location was discovered? Um, that is something that I, I, I wouldn't know. There's obviously several theories over the, the captain's phone or, uh, or the, the satellite connection that he was using. But I don't have that. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, of course, the princess's father is one of the richest men in the world. I mean, how do you believe that his wealth is factoring into this situation? Um, Sheikh Mohammed is, is, is one of the most powerful, uh, powerful men in this world. And that's why three years after the kidnapping and uh, UK High Court ruling where uh, we where the judge concluded that um, Latifa was indeed kidnapped and, and it was orchestrated by Sheikh Mohammed. And still the situation today is the same. Latifa still held a hostage in, in Dubai. And I believe it's only because who her father is. He's, he's so powerful and so well connected. And yet hope is not lost. The UN, uh, you know, has taken some action so far. Uh, do you have any, are you holding out hope that the UAE will cooperate and that Princess Latifa might win her freedom? Well, this morning when I woke up, I was, I was already feeling positive that um, just the day after releasing these videos, um, the, the inter international community had had started to to speak out. Um, the UN, um, even uh, the British Foreign Secretary and the Prime Minister, um, were finally uh, expressing their concerns, which was the first time um, in, in in three years that um, finally this is this is happening. So I'm I'm actually feeling quite positive now. And how? do you associate what's happened to Princess Latifa with the sort of larger issue of the way that women are often, you know, treated uh, in that culture? I mean, if she wins her freedom, does that also resonate um, for the future of women's rights in Dubai? Well, I feel that in, in, in that culture, um, there really are no women's rights. If you are born in a family that's modern, you are allowed to study, you're maybe allowed to marry a foreign man, you, you can make decisions like that for your life. But if you're born in a family like where, where, where Latifa is, she has never had a possibility to do things that she's really wanted. Um, when I first met her, she told me that she wanted to study medicine, but she was not allowed. She's, she hasn't left the country since year 2000. She's no, never been able to live the, the normal, simple, independent life that she's wanted to, even if she's already 35 years old. Well, we hope the best for your friend. Um, we certainly hope that she wins her freedom. Tina, thank you so much for coming to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.